Hi there. Today we are starting a series of videos on a very important topic of communication systems and that is the angle modulation. This is the first video of the series, so let's get started. Before I talk about angle modulation, let us first consider the expression for the carrier signal as a cosine omega c t plus theta naught. Here a is the peak amplitude, omega c is the constant angular frequency in radians per second and theta naught is the constant phase angle. Here the argument of the cosine is the angle theta of t of the carrier signal. Okay, now let us define the uh, let us define another signal phi of t to be equal to a cosine theta of t and this time theta of t is some arbitrary function is some arbitrary function of time t of time t it does not necessarily have to be a linear function of time t as in the case of carrier signal and with that i am defining another quantity which is the instantaneous angular frequency omega i to be equal to the derivative of the argument of the cosine of i of t so it, omega i is equal to the derivative time derivative of theta of t with these we can now talk about angle modulation the angle modulation are the techniques of modulation in which the angle of the carrier signal is changed with the message signal m of t uh, there are two possibilities of changing the angle of the carrier signal with the message signal one of which is the phase modulation in this video we will be only considering the phase modulation or simply pm in phase modulation the angle theta of t is changed with the message signal the angle theta of t of the carrier is changed with the message signal by linearly varying theta naught varying th theta not varying linearly with the message signal that would imply theta naught to be equal to some constant kp times the message signal plus another constant c uh, co uh, corresponding to this theta naught we have theta of t as omega ct plus kp m of t plus a constant c and correspond and Corresponding to this theta of t, the j, uh, phi of t is equal to a times the cosine of the theta of t that is omega c t plus k p m of t plus the constant c. Now for our upcoming calculations, let us assume for convenience c to be equal to 0. And so that would imply phi of t to be equal to a times the cosine of omega c t plus k p m of t uh, for this phi of t we have the omega i to be equal to we know that it is equal to d theta by t that is the derivative of the argument so omega i will be equal to d by dt of omega c t plus k p m of t and so omega i will be equal to omega c plus k p times the derivative of the message signal here i have used dot notation this notation was used by isaac newton to express derivatives with respect to time t so omega i is we can see from this equation that omega i is varying linearly with the derivative of the message signal m dot of t uh, if you look at phi of t, this phi of t is called. Let me write the. Uh, let me write it down again. For the message signal m of t, we have phi of t as equal to a times the cosine of omega c t plus k p m of t. This phi of t is the phase modulated signal or pm signal. And the technique for generating this phi of t will be called phase modulation. So let us call phi of t as pm, phi of t pm, and we have omega i to be, uh, we have omega i as omega c plus k p m dot of t. This concludes our phase modulation. In the next video, we will be talking about frequency modulation and comparing the phase modulation with the frequency modulation. Thank you.